how to build a V-shaped back, the best exercises and techniques. What's up guys, I'm Matt Dasho. I'm here at the Blue Star Nutraceuticals training facility and today I'm gonna take you through an amazing back workout and I'm gonna teach you a whole bunch of different tips and techniques to help make sure that you build a massive V-shaped back, okay? So pay attention guys, because there's gonna be a lot of take home gold from this. But if you guys apply on a regular basis, you're gonna build that superhero physique with a massive V-shaped back. It's gonna be awesome, so let's get to it. All right guys, so as you know, every great workout starts with a great warm up. And since we're training back today, I'm gonna do a few quick warm up exercises. They're gonna warm up my lats, warm up my mid traps, my rear delts, my rhomboids. All of these muscles are gonna be using today to lift some heavy weights, all right? So a couple key ones that I like to do, banded pull-aparts, a big fan of these. Just make sure, you, this doesn't have to be super magical, guys. I start high, come down low. I'm coming just above the nipple line. I'm gonna squeeze my shoulder blades together. This is a great exercise to strengthen and warm up the rear delts rhomboids, mid traps, great starter, even a great starter for shoulder days too if you want, but absolutely a great little warm up exercise for your back days. I usually like to do a couple external rotations as well. Same thing, great things for shoulders, but also great exercises for backs. And I'm gonna wanna stretch out my lats a little bit as well. So I like to do some dynamic stretching for that. I'll usually do something like some yoga type stuff and then some really a little bit of static stretching as well. But I'll just give you a couple of ones that I do here, guys. So I always like to start in this push up position, drive my butt up in the air, push my head between my arms. It's gonna be a great stretch for the lats. It's a great activation for the core. It's also really good for extending your thoracic spine, which is gonna be super important because if you can't do that, you're not gonna be able to get your shoulder blades in the right spot to be able to work the lat muscles properly. So I'll usually do about eight to 10 reps of this. I'll hold the stretch for about two seconds for each rep. And then one more quick one that I'll do. I'm not gonna go into crazy, a bunch of stuff for warm ups here, but I like to do a little bit of a dynamic stretch for the lat directly. And I'll usually just sit on my heels, walk my hands out, and then walk from one side to the other. And I'll just spend about 20, 30 seconds going through each side, full range of motion. Now, this doesn't look like much guys, but you would be amazed how much of a stretch you're gonna get all the way down the side of your body when you do this. And again, you wanna make sure that you've got a good full range of motion when you're doing these exercises because remember the muscle that stretches the most is the muscle that's gonna grow the most during these exercises. And if you're cutting out full range of motion, you're really selling yourself short on a lot of gains, especially with the lats. One of the mistakes I see guys make all the time is they do really short ranges of motion with all of their back movements. And outside of just having poor form, they're not getting full range of motion and they're really minimizing the effect of their workouts. So make sure you're gonna maximize the effect of your workouts, full range of motion, solid warm ups, and pick the right exercises. All right guys, so my first exercise of the day, and this is oftentimes gonna be one of the first exercises I start my back workouts with, this is gonna be wide grip pull-ups. Now, wide grip pull-ups are really great for developing that V taper. One of the things early on in my training career I was always told was wide, wide, wide to build a wide back. Now, I don't necessarily think that's the case anymore because sometimes if you go too wide, it's gonna shorten the range of motion. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more when I do pull-downs, but for right now, I will admit that wide grip pull-ups have been one of the best overall back building exercises I've ever done. I've done a ton of pull-ups in my day. Makes for a great party trick, makes you look cool, which let's be honest is super important. But on top of that, it's just gonna be one of the best back building exercises you could possibly do. A Couple key things here to make sure that you get these right, guys. One is we want to avoid swinging, we want to avoid momentum, but we also want to avoid not getting our scapula, our shoulder blades in the right position. So a lot of times I'll see people do this movement and they're really just kind of pulling like this. They, you can tell you're doing it wrong if you end up in this position here because it looks awkward, it feels awkward, and there's a good chance it's gonna hurt your shoulders. You wanna make sure you're engaging those scaps right off the hop, right to start the pull, and they're gonna continue to move down towards your back pockets as you're pulling yourself up towards the bar. Now guys, the amount of sets and reps you're gonna do with this are really gonna depend on person to person, what you're capable of doing. But if you're getting to the point where you're doing more than say 12 reps, I would just say it's time to strap some weight onto your waist and work back at about that six to eight rep range. You can like continue to get benefits from this exercise as you go up in rep ranges, but at the end of the day, it's gonna be more so for just, you know, overall endurance than it will be for overall mass. So if you get to the point where you're consistently doing three sets of say more than 12 reps, just strap some weight on. It'll make it more fun. It'll make it a better challenge. And overall, it's going to attribute to more muscle development and more strength gains for other exercises as well. The other thing with these two, if you're having a hard time doing any reps at all, you can set yourself up in a power rack somewhere where you can use a band to assist. Sometimes there's machines available that will actually deload you a little bit. So it'll make you lighter. 
as you're doing it. That's kind of a topic for a whole other video, but that is an option if you're not able to do full on pull-ups on your own yet, okay? Make sure that the rep range is a good full range. Make sure that you're not cutting out half of the movement. I see a ton of guys coming down part of the way, coming up part of the way. Make sure you're not doing that, guys. You're not gonna get any gains from that. Good full range of motion. Pick the right width for you. Again, I like to go just outside shoulder width. If you go out super far, all you're gonna do is shorten your range of motion. You won't get a good full stretch of the lats. I wanna show you one more, or maybe two more quick pointers here that'll help you to develop that pull-up strength if it's really hard for you to get a rep or two, okay? You know, like for me, they came easy when I was young, but that's because I was light as a twig. It's not always gonna be the case for people. So one of them is isometric holds. So you can get yourself into the top position and just hold for time. If you're gonna set up like this and you don't have a band or a pin or something you can step on, you can use a plyo box and you can essentially just kind of hop up into position and try to hold, okay? I would aim for about 30 to 45 seconds if you wanna go longer, if you wanna do a minute, even better. But make sure you don't potentially injure yourself and make sure you're not holding and falling out of position. Simple way to do this though, if your box is high enough, you're right close, you're just gonna hop up, get into that position, hold for time, right? And just build up time here. And if you can't hold here, come down nice and slow, okay? Which builds me into my next point, is that you can do eccentrics. So maybe you're not strong enough to get a ton of concentrics or the positive part of the pull-up. Maybe you can only get one or two reps. You can always use the box, hop up into the top position, slowly lower yourself so you can overload the eccentric portion. We're gonna be stronger there. And it's gonna help to build that strength that's gonna allow you to get more uh, positive reps later on. The key here is to make sure when you jump up, you're not swinging too much because it's gonna be really tough to hold your position. Now, when I'm doing these, I'm usually aiming for about a three to five second long negative. And I'll aim typically for about five to six reps. Any more than that, you're just gonna burn yourself out, potentially hurt your elbows and shoulders. So make sure you're paying attention to your joint health as you're doing it. Okay guys, so next we're gonna talk about barbell rows here. Barbell rows are gonna be one of your quintessential back building exercises. You wanna make sure that no matter what back routine you're doing, you're not cutting out barbell rows. They're that important. Now, there's a few different things I wanna talk about here, why they're important, how to switch them up to get slightly different results. A couple things, obviously, they're important because they work your back. But on top of that, they're gonna build the strength of your torso to maintain position in a hinged position, I should say. So when you're doing these rows, you're gonna be bent over, you're gonna be trying to get your torso a little bit more towards parallel to the ground. Remember, gravity pulls down, and we wanna be pulling against that. And since theoretically this is a horizontal row, if we're too upright when we're doing these, all we're gonna do is a glorified shrug. And it just doesn't look cool. We wanna stay away from things that don't look cool. But outside of that, it's not gonna be effective. We also wanna stay away from that stuff too. So we're gonna build that torso strength, which is gonna carry over to building our deadlift strength. Deadlift's actually a great back building exercise as well, although it's not in the scope of this video right now, but make sure you're not cutting out your deadlifts either. Now next, we're gonna talk about hand width and hand position. So as a general rule, the wider I'm going to go out on the bar, the more I'm gonna hit the upper back muscles. So the more I'm gonna be thinking about, I'm hitting my, my rear delts, my mid and upper traps, rhomboids right across the upper back, okay? I'm gonna have a shorter range of motion, so I won't get as much stretch for the lats, but it's gonna be really good for building that top shelf part of the back. I like to call it the top shelf. Now, we can bring the hands in more towards a neutral position as well. As we're doing that, what's gonna happen is we're gonna increase the range of motion of the lats. Remember, the lats themselves insert into the arm. So the more range of motion I can get from this arm, the more range of motion I'll get from the lat. And remember, the exercise that stretches the most is typically to be the exercise that grows the most. So as I bring my hands more in towards a neutral state, I'm gonna get better range of motion as a result. I personally don't like to get my hands too much further than less than shoulder width, mainly because if I'm doing that, my elbow's gonna flare, my shoulders will internally rotate. I'm not gonna get a ton of lat development out of that. I'm not gonna get a ton of mid-back development out of that. If I'm going to do that with anything, I'm gonna change my hand position to a neutral position. So I might use that maybe more on a landmine press or cable row, that kind of thing. The other thing you guys can think about here is an overhand versus an underhand grip. So with an overhand grip, again, I'm gonna work a little bit more of the brachioradialis through here. I'm gonna be putting a little bit more emphasis again on the upper back as a general rule. If I switch my hand to an underhand grip, I'm gonna incorporate a little bit more of the biceps. So this is a great exercise to do or a great variation to do if you're working on developing the biceps a little bit more as well, if you're doing a back and bicep specific workout. But on top of that, I have found that the underhand grip allows me to hit a little bit lower in the lat. So instead of just focusing on that upper stack portion of the back, the underhand grip's gonna allow the lats to flare out a little bit lower. So you're gonna get these bad boys popping out a little bit lower here. And then the last thing I'll say is that whether we do these reps super strict 
or if we use a little bit of body English, I call it a body English or oomph. Both are important. I would say use both. Keep in mind that the back muscles are postural muscles, which means they're slow twitch, which means they're more endurance-based muscles. So sometimes they respond really good to that, but you might find that it's tough to develop strength if you just stay super strict. So I like to use a combination of not using a lot of body English. So I might be more like this for some reps, but I also like to use some body English when I'm going heavier. That way I can, I can use a little bit more of the global muscles to help pull the weight up, but I'm gonna do that in the attempt to use that negative. So I'm overloading the eccentric part of the movement because I know I'm gonna be stronger there. So I'm gonna be able to use the full body to kind of plow the weight up and I'm gonna hold it there and fight the negative. The caveat there is to make sure that you're gonna be safe when you're doing it. So don't be super ballistic. Make sure you're bracing your core and make sure your back is nice and straight. You don't wanna be doing that with a round back. You don't wanna be doing that if you can't brace your core if you've already got a pre-existing back injury. So strict will always be a little bit safer, all things considered. The other thing that we can talk about quick here is the pendlay row. So the pendlay row is a variation where essentially you're gonna be coming all the way down to the ground every rep. So you are getting a very short rest in between reps, but the benefit of this is you're gonna be pulling from a dead stop, which means you're not gonna be able to use any momentum or that stretch reflex. And for sure, you're gonna be getting a full range of motion with every rep. I should throw an underhand variation in here just to show you guys, again, Thumbs up, a little bit more bicep, a little bit lower on the lat. Now, theoretically what I'm trying to do is think about pulling my elbows together at the back there, which can be tough if you have limited shoulder mobility, but it's gonna give you a better result and a better squeeze through your lats. When you're doing these bad boys, it's important you clip your weight. You know, it's pretty much always important you clip your weights unless you're lifting by yourself and uh, you're afraid you're gonna drop a bar on your neck and there's no one there to spot you. But outside of that, when you're doing rows, deadlifts, squats, if one plate slips off, that bar is gonna go flying the opposite way really fast. And that's not good for your back. Make sure you clip your weights when you're doing your lifts. Okay guys, one more point I wanna make about this, and we kinda of go over this all the time every time we talk about a row, but you wanna make sure you're getting your shoulder blades into the right position while you're doing this range of motion. So I, I like to think about this whole shoulder joint traveling as I'm rowing. So when I'm going to full stretch, the whole shoulder is coming forward. When I'm getting a full contraction, that whole shoulder is moving. So that whole shoulder joint travels. At the end of the rep, that full contraction, I'm thinking about trying to put my shoulder blades in my back pocket. So I want my shoulder blades to end here. I don't want them to be here. Okay, so if you look at this from the side, here it looks as though my shoulder is pointing down towards the ground or straight ahead. Here it looks as though my shoulder is pointing up. Why that's important, outside of getting the right muscles to be activated, it's that if this shoulder blade is coming forward and it looks like it's pointing down, we're using up all the space inside the shoulder joint and there's a good chance we're gonna potentially injure something inside that shoulder joint. We might pinch a tendon from the bicep, we might pinch a tendon from the rotator cuff. The big thing is that over time, we're gonna be chewing up the tendons inside the shoulder joint. We wanna avoid that. We always wanna focus on good form anyways. All right guys, one of the things I want to talk to you quickly about too is breathing patterns. So you guys might have noticed or been paying attention to how I'm breathing during the rows and it might be a little bit backwards to what some of you guys are used to. As a general rule, I'm gonna use different breathing patterns or different breathing techniques for different exercises and different loads, okay? So say for example, I was doing a squat or a deadlift. A critical thing um, to remember is that we want to make sure that we're maintaining a lot of intra-abdominal, so pressure through the midsection here. The more pressure I can maintain through here, the more I have a capability of stabilizing these lumbar vertebrae and creating rigidity through the core. So stabilizing these bad boys means I'm not gonna hurt my back. Having lots of rigidity through here means I have the ability to transfer power from lower body to upper body or vice versa. So an analogy I once heard a long time ago that I thought was fantastic was, you can't push a rope. And it took me a couple seconds to wrap my head around this, but if you were to take a long rope and line it in a straight line across the floor, and on one end you went to push the end of that rope, the other end would do nothing, it would just coil up. That's kind of like your core. If you don't have rigidity through here, whatever I have on that opposite end, if I don't have rigidity, I'm gonna push on this end and nothing's gonna happen there. So if I'm trying to lift something, if I've got you know, weight on my back that I'm trying to move with my legs, if I don't have rigidity through my core, I'm not gonna be able to move that weight. I won't be able to move it efficiently or safely. Now, if I'm doing lighter exercises, I wanna make sure that I'm breathing throughout the movement. So if I'm doing something where I'm not gonna necessarily need maximum core pressure, I prefer to breathe through the movement for a number of reasons. One is because I'm gonna be able to have more endurance throughout the movement. My blood pressure is not gonna peak. I'm not gonna hemorrhage my eyes or see stars or anything like that. But also, you really own the movement if you can breathe 
through it. Proper breathing patterns aren't just gonna allow you to do more reps, they're gonna allow you to feel more comfortable throughout the movement because you're not wasting as much energy. So you're gonna last longer as well. Muscles can't function very long without air. Nothing functions very long without air. So you wanna make sure that you're breathing properly. Now, depending on the movement, sometimes too, I might have um, a slightly different technique. So bench pressing, for example, lighter sets, I'm inhaling on the way down, exhaling on the way up but I'll, you'll never see me exhale fully. So if right now you guys stopped and did a big long full exhale, you'd see that the shape of your spine in your rib cage would shift and change. It's gonna be really hard to maintain proper scapular position if you're fully exhaled, unless you have perfect posture to be begin with. And I'll tell you right now, I don't have perfect posture to begin with. Most people don't. If you exhale fully, your shoulder blades are gonna come forward. If they come forward, we can't keep them in a stabilized position. So bench pressing, for example, I don't do full exhales. I might exhale about, you know, 30 to 40% of my air in between reps, um, but I don't do full exhales because I know if I do that, I'm gonna lose stable position. And I know a lot of times if I do a full exhale, I'm gonna lose that intra-abdominal pressure. So a couple key points there for you guys. With rows, for example, I'm usually kind of inhaling as I come up, exhaling on the way out. So I'm inhaling on the hard part of the rows, exhaling on the way on the easier part. As long as you're able to stay braced, that's gonna be most important. So you can do what works for you, but maintain that brace um, the analogy I heard on this one, I'm a big fan of analogies, was breathing behind the shield. So I wanna make sure that I can brace and still be able to breathe. I could have a 300 pound person stand on my stomach, I could have a full on conversation with you. If I poop myself a little, I can still have a full on conversation because I've built that strength of my abdominal wall. The main thing is be able to maintain that tension while you're breathing. If you can have a full on conversation while maintaining your brace, then you don't necessarily have to squeeze as hard as hell through every step of your reps. All right guys, bonus tip there. Next exercise we're gonna talk about here is seated cable rows. So again, lots of different variations that you can do with this exercise. Similar type of results that you'll get with a bent over barbell row in terms of grip spacing. But one of the things I really like with a cable row is to do a neutral grip or a close grip cable row. This has gotta be one of my all time favorite back building exercises. If I do this just right, I'm gonna get a ton of range of motion from the lats, so I'm gonna get a ton of lat development. But one of the things that really hammers home is that mid, those, that mid trap and that rhomboid development. If you're not developing the mid traps and the rhomboids, the V taper eventually is gonna be hard to get because you're not gonna be able to move massive amounts of weights with your other exercises. So this is one of my favorite exercises for building that. Now, a couple of the common mistakes I see when people are doing rows. One is staying too rigid and not getting a full range of motion. So sometimes people are like this and they're not moving their torso at all. Remember, your lat inserts into your arm. So if I don't change this angle, all that much, I'm gonna limit my range of motion. If I lean forward, now I've got a much greater angle here, which means I'm gonna stretch that lat out, which means I'm gonna get a much better range of motion. Also, if I'm tipping back too far as I'm doing this, I'm gonna reduce my range of motion as well. So you wanna make sure you keep these things in mind while you're doing your exercises. Remember, the muscle that stretches the most is often the muscle that's gonna grow the most. The other thing that I see people doing wrong is they don't let the shoulder joint travel. They'll keep the shoulder pinned and they'll let the elbow get behind the shoulder. At that point, you're not really working your lats, you're doing a glorified bicep exercise. And I say glorified loosely because there's nothing glory filled about doing a really shitty row. All right guys, so make sure the shoulder joint travels. You're gonna wanna pull the shoulder blades, guess where? Down and back. And you wanna wanna make sure you get a nice full range of motion. So let's have a look at the wrong way here first and then I'll put some weight on so we can do it properly. So if I was doing it, no range of motion and without the shoulder traveling, that's what it's gonna look like. 99 times out of 100, when someone tells me they're not developing their back muscles, they can't feel a row in their back, it's because their shoulders are staying stationary. And remember, we're using up all that space inside the shoulder joint, we're chewing up rotator cuff tendons. So it doesn't look cool, and it's not good for the shoulders, and you're not gonna get gains. So cut that shit out. Now, if we're gonna do this properly, put a little bit of weight on here for some fun. I want a nice full range of motion, I'm gonna let my body lean forward. I'm gonna come back a little bit as I'm doing the row. I can do this super strict, so I can do it slowly, or I can use a little bit of that body English like I talked about before. Both have benefits, use both, start with slow and strict, add oomph later on. Make sure you're getting the shoulder blades down and back into those back pockets when you're in your fully contracted position. So again, leaning forward, shoulder blades down and back, elbows end in line with the shoulders. Pro tip here, guys, on the way out, if I want extra lat activation, I can think about pushing my shoulders down towards my hips. Oh, that's a game changer. 
I've got one special bonus that I'm gonna show you too. This is like one of the best lat development exercises I've ever done. I call it a two to one row. And it's gonna take advantage of the fact that we're stronger on the eccentric or the lengthening phase. We're gonna lower the weight down a little bit. The idea here is we're gonna use both arms during the concentric phase, very slowly let go of one side of the handle, and then use the single arm for the eccentric phase. That's gonna allow us to overload the stronger phase of a single arm. Man, and I tell you guys, you will never feel your lat fire as hard as you will with this variation. I like to alternate arms, and I like to stick to about 10 to 12 reps total because this is a little bit more of a strength building variation. It's gonna just trash the back in a good way. So make sure you use that one wisely. Use it at the start of your workouts. All right, guys, on to one of my all-time favorite back exercises now, the one-arm dumbbell row. So again, remember the name of the game a lot of times is range of motion here. Are we gonna be able to get full range of motion with an exercise? Are we gonna be able to load it effectively? And are we gonna be able to do it with proper form? Now, with a one-arm dumbbell row, as you get heavier, your position here is gonna make a big difference as to whether you can get proper form or not, mainly because the dumbbells get bigger and bigger. So essentially when I'm doing this, one of the mistakes I see people make a lot of times is they're not really engaging their lats because they're not drawing the dumbbell back towards the hip. If I'm doing a row and I end like this, if my hand is more in line with my shoulder than it is in line with my elbow, essentially I'm shortening the lever arm, which means I'm making the weight lighter and I'm not actually engaging the muscles I want to engage. So typically what I'm trying to do with rows is at the end of the movement, I'm aiming for about a 90 degree angle here. If I go much further than that, there's a good chance I'm gonna dip my shoulder forward and put it into that really shitty position that might injure the shoulder joint. And it's also gonna be a lot harder to move the weight. So with a dumbbell row, I want full range of motion. I'm actually gonna let the hand swoop ahead of the shoulder here. Remember, the lats are inserted in the arm, so I want good full range of motion. I'm gonna drag it back towards my hip. I'm gonna finish with about a 90 degree angle here. And because I can with this exercise more than others, I'm gonna rotate a little bit. Rotation is part of how we are built. We can't even walk without rotating our body in all planes at all times. So we wanna make sure we're incorporating that. That's gonna allow us to lift a little bit more weight. We're gonna get more muscle groups involved. We're gonna get better range of motion. And it's actually a more natural movement for all of the back muscles. That rotation, again, we wanna make sure that we're not allowing the back to round. We wanna keep the low back nice and straight. And as we row, we're not gonna rotate excessively. I'm not trying to get my head up to the ceiling. I just wanna add a little bit more so I get a little bit more range of motion and incorporate all those rotational core muscles as well. You'll notice again, my hand came forward of the shoulder here, so I had a nice full range of motion. When I set up here, I put this leg back further than this knee. If I'm in too tight, the dumbbell's gonna run into my thigh and I'll have to do it the wrong way. So if I put this back, I create the space that I need to get the dumbbell in the right spot. If I were to do this wrong, this might be too heavy for me to do wrong, but I'm gonna try anyways. Oh, I should probably cut this one 20 and a half. All right, hey Minion, you think you could grab me a 60 pound dumbbell so I could do this exercise properly and properly? Thank you. No. Because I called him Minion. He knows I love him. I'm so sorry. So again, not maximizing the benefits of this exercise. I'm not going to go for optimal joint alignment. I'm not going to go for healthy positions. I'm not going to go for rotation. Essentially, I would be doing this like that. Okay, so see the shoulder's not traveling. The wrist isn't lined up with the elbow. I'm not rotating. I'm not getting full range of motion. My hand's not coming in front of the shoulder at the bottom. I'm doing everything wrong here. The only place I really felt that was my forearm and my bicep. And again, biceps are cool but they're only cool if you have a big back. If you don't have a big back, you know, biceps are show muscles that aren't gonna be good for anything. So make sure you do this right. Pick a weight that allows you to do the movement properly. If you do it properly, you might find it's actually easier and you can lift more weight. Quick recap, guys. Make sure you're using the right weight. Make sure you're getting a full range of motion. Naturally, let yourself rotate. Make sure you're getting the wrist lined up with the elbow. Make sure you're getting the shoulder blade down and back into that back pocket. And just make sure you don't leave out the one arm rows. All right? now. Hey, Minion, mind putting this weight away for me, please? This is why he leaves me hanging, because I'm such a dick. You forgot the 120. <laughs> I actually hate having other people put my weights away for me. He keeps insisting he puts them away, and I keep trying to put them away on my own, but 
All right, guys, the last exercise that we're gonna do today is a pull down. Now, originally I had on here a wide grip pull down, but I gotta be honest with you, I love all pull downs for different reasons, and they're all great back developers. A wide grip pull down is gonna be fantastic if you're having a hard time getting lots of reps in on your pull ups. But one of the key things to remember with a wide grip pull down again is that if you go too wide, all right, and I made this mistake a lot in my early lifting career, if I go too wide, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna shorten my range of motion. Right? I can't pull down very far, which means it's not an optimal muscle builder for my lats. Gonna be a great muscle builder for my rear delts, but if I'm really trying to build that V taper, a lot of times people think wider is better. That's not necessarily gonna be the case. We're gonna do a couple different variations here just so I can show you the differences and show you the benefits. You may or may not have one of these bars at your gym. <clears throat> you don't have to have one of them. They're really neat though, because what they do is they do allow a little bit of motion of the wrist here. So it ends up making the movement a little bit more natural. A lot of times our body's not meant to be in fixed positions as we're moving through these ranges motion so some of these little pieces of equipment are kind of helpful especially if you've got any type of wrist problem or elbow problem but same thing here is with the pull-ups guys we want to make sure that we're getting those scaps engaged so I'm not gonna do the movement like this I'm not gonna have my shoulders popping up like that I'm gonna engage my scaps I'm gonna think about pulling them down into my back pockets as I'm doing the movement so I'm not even gonna do it like a this and then pull I'm gonna do it all together as one nice smooth movement a bonus point here is that again Remember, we're always thinking range of motion. So a lot of times I see people do pull downs, they're leaning back and they stay leaned back the entire time. You know, that's not bad. You're still working the muscles, that's great. But if I wanna get a nice full range of motion, I'm gonna allow my body to come forward. Again, where's the lat insert into? It inserts into my arm, right? So if I'm here, do I have more or less of an angle between my torso and my arm than if I'm here? Obviously, I'm gonna have less of an angle here, so I'm not gonna get as much stretch. So if I wanna get the maximum benefit from this exercise, at the top of the movement, I'm gonna let my head come forward between my arms, okay? I can lean back as I pull, but on the way up, I want full stretch, so I'm gonna let my head come forward, okay? Always important that you lean back though. Not so much with this handle, but if you had a straight handle, you don't lean back, you're gonna biff yourself in the head, and that's not cool either. Now, I'm gonna play around with a couple different handles here just so I can go over some different points for you guys. Again, similar to some of the other exercises that we did today, grip has an effect on where on your back it's gonna hit. There is no one grip that's perfect for all things at all times, so variate your grips. So use variation with your grips and change them on a fairly regular basis. If you're doing a wide grip pull down with an overhand grip, you're doing that for four to six weeks. Next time you might wanna go an underhand mid grip. Next time you might wanna do a close grip. Make sure you're using lots of different variation. I'm gonna bring this one over. So again, wide grip here for the sake of building my lats. Wide grip, I like to go with my hands just outside shoulder width. So if I'm here and I'm trying to do this exercise full range of motion right now, if you see how far my arms travel, again, remember the lats attached to my arms, okay? I'm not getting a ton of range of motion here. I might be getting like, you know, 65 degrees range of motion. If I do a grip just outside shoulder width, right off the hop, my arms are almost at about 180 degrees angle to my torso immediately. And here, I can get a much greater range of motion. And if I don't push my head forward versus if I do push my head forward. So these things seem like little small deals, but they add up, guys. Remember, the muscle that stretches the most is the muscle that's probably gonna grow the most. So you wanna make sure you're stacking all the cards in your favor here. Now, again, hand position. Overhand, gonna be great for developing this part of the forearm. It's gonna de-emphasize the bicep, put more emphasis on the lats. That's awesome. Underhand grip, gonna work the forearms on this side a little bit more, work the biceps a little bit more, and I find they work the lats down here at the lower part of the swoop a little bit more. Also awesome. Pick whichever variation you want based on which areas you wanna work on, and then make sure you just switch them up anytime you're switching up your program. One thing I will say is that with an underhand grip, I find if my hands are in too close, I don't get a very good contraction of the lats because my elbows have to split out and my shoulders internally rotate. So not one of my favorite variations. You guys might feel different, but that's just where I stand. Overhand, if I go close, I find I'm a little bit better off because I can still squeeze my shoulder blades together. So if I had to pick underhand or overhand for a very close grip, overhand's gonna be my go-to. I'm also a really huge fan. Sorry, I just hit puberty yesterday. I'm also a very huge fan of using the close grip attachment that I used on that row machine over there. Again, same idea here. This is gonna allow me to get a really full range of motion. This is a position I'm really strong in with my hands facing each other. It's really great for the shoulders, great for shoulder health. So if you've got any you know, pinchy parts of the shoulders, this variation, hands in a neutral position are always great. But here, same thing. I'm gonna get a really solid range of motion with my arms here because now I'm really maximizing that full stretch. So here, 
my head driven through. As I come down, I can lean back just a touch. Shoulder blades are gonna be down and back in my back pocket. Rib cage is up nice and proud. I've squeezed those shoulder blades together on the way up. I'm gonna drive my head forward. Oh, the stretch from this is unbelievable. A little bonus too, if you're, if you're extra crazy, once you kind of like tap these out, if you want at the end of a set, add in a 20, 30 second stretch, a loaded stretch. It'll stretch out that muscle. It'll stretch out the fascia, which encases the muscle. And it'll allow for more muscular growth. It's a really cool little bonus at the end of your last set. Make sure you do that near the end of the workout though, because the pump is insane. All right guys, so that's it for today's video. Now listen, just a quick recap, because um, there's a lot of great stuff in today's video. So I'm gonna go over a couple of the most important points that you wanna remember. So full range of motion for these exercises is critically important. Remember the muscle that stretches the most is probably the muscle that's gonna grow the most, all right? Getting yourself into the right position. So making sure a lot of times that the shoulder blades end up in that down and back position, that the whole shoulder joint itself is traveling is gonna be critically important. Where you line up your hand, hand positioning is going to have a big impact as well. And then different types of exercise variations you want to stick with for certain amounts of time so you can get the benefit before switching them out. Those are some of the most important points guys so really make sure you hammer those home. I'm gonna give you one more bonus tip now too um, and this one kind of should go without saying but man if you guys are skipping out on protein you guys are missing out on massive gains. ISO Smooth by Blue Star is my all-time favorite whey protein. Stuff tastes great. It's pure protein. There's no junk. There's no fillers. And I can drink this stuff all day, but what I'm gonna tell you is that you should go and buy 10 bottles right now because you won't be disappointed. The stuff tastes amazing. Pro tip, don't skip your protein. Thanks guys, I hope you liked the video. Add any comments if you think there's anything I forgot. Hit like and subscribe to check out more videos like this. We put out two videos every single week. And until next time, drink your protein and stay strong. All right guys, thank you for joining us for another Blue Star Nutraceuticals training video. And remember, if you wanna to continue to build muscle and burn fat, we've got awesome content here and here. And if you hit the subscribe button right here, I promise you we'll be putting out two videos every single week that'll help you reach your muscle building goals. And remember, we're not just a YouTube channel, we also make award-winning supplements. So no matter what your goal, whether it's to build muscle or burn fat, we've got the supplement for you. So check us out at bluestarnutraceuticals.com.